Try to keep it going here. Swings wide into the left circle. Now to the net. Backhand. Save Bishop. Tampa Bay wins. And the Bruins season comes to an end. And it ends with them missing the playoffs for the first time in eight years. From Boston's home for sports, this is Breaking News. The Bruins have just announced that GM Peter Shirelli has been fired. The Boston Bruins have named Don Sweeney as the general manager of the Boston Bruins. Charlie Jacobs, Neely, and Sweeney hold the press conference today at TD Garden. Today is, is a great day. Today is really, I think, a new era. And introduce Don Sweeney as our eighth general manager in Boston Bruins. We did not beat expectations. We have some challenges. We have some flexibility issues that we have to get a, a back out in front of, that we have to address head on. Um, and we have to, to, to get back a little bit the aggressiveness that is lost in our, in our group. So, yeah, not exactly the postseason the Boston Bruins or their fans were looking for. But the work of building a Stanley Cup contender begins immediately. The first order of business for the new GM is to touch base with all the Bruins players and coaches. Oh, well, you think I had so much video flying your way the last little while, huh? Have you, uh, thanks. You know, we, we got a lot of work to do in that front, but uh, you, can, you can tell from where my, my mind's eye that we got to have it tight in terms of what you think is, uh, is the proper list and the order. And... All right. Well, I'll circle back with you here, all right? Awesome. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks. Next up on the new GM's agenda, making the whole thing official by signing his contract with Bruins president Cam Neely. Donald. <laughs> well, first of all, congratulations. Um, I know you're going to do a great job. Or I really feel that. Um, it's hard to believe you're the eighth general manager in the history of the team, which is uh, pretty amazing. So well, Harry certainly took up a lion's share of that yeah. one, and uh, you know, I'm obviously. Pretty humbled and excited about the opportunity. Well, I think you're going to do great. I think our, our fans are going to see uh, a different Don Sweeney than they than, than they probably think you are. So, uh, and I'm excited about that. So, congratulations. Thanks, Kim. Perfect. Awesome. Well, Thanks, good luck. Thanks. Don Sweeney now officially holds the reins. The draft, free agency, and difficult decisions involving the team's salary cap situation await. Early June finds New Bruins general manager Don Sweeney and his staff in Buffalo, New York for the NHL's annual scouting combine. Here, all of the top NHL prospects will be timed, tested, and measured to see how they stack up physically. Boston currently holds the 14th overall selection in the draft, and Bruins strength and conditioning coach John Whitesides is on the floor to monitor the physical attributes of their potential picks. While upstairs, Don Sweeney and company spend time getting to know some of the top prospects they are contemplating selecting in the first round. Well, this is obviously an opportunity for our staff to have an up-close personal view. It's a snapshot of each and every player, so it's, it's good to be able to have the discussions with the players, with our staff, all in the same room, to sort of, you know, find a string every once in a while to pull on and see if we can extract a little extra information. Hi, Zach. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Good to see you. How's it been? It's been, uh, it's been fun. It's been a really cool experience. Yeah. Uh, what are you smiling about? <laughs> Just being here, you gotta, gotta stop and smell the roses yeah, a little yeah, bit. <laughs> sure, if you're meeting our coach for the first time, how would you help him to understand what type of player and what motivates you? What motivates me is goals. I love I love setting goals for myself, and I'm very I consider myself uh, very determined to kind of reach those goals. And uh, I'm a very competitive guy. I, I consider it a will to win, 
uh, is very strong, and I think uh, those would be my biggest motivators. Are you a good student, Zach? I consider myself a very good student. I finished with uh, honor roll at my at my school, and I'll be graduating this year and taking university courses next year. Why do you want to play in the NHL? Because I want to win a Stanley Cup. It's the one thing I've wanted to do ever since I was a little kid, and it's always kind of driven me. It kind of seems like the happiest day in those guys' lives when they when they win that Stanley Cup, and it's uh, it's my biggest goal to to win a Stanley Cup. <laughs> What do you do away from the rink? Uh, I play a good amount of video games, uh, especially in Swift Current. Um, there's not too much you can do. Um, but hey, you know, <laughs> there's a couple movies that are out once every month, so uh, that's about it. Uh, go hang out with friends, kind of thing like that. We're all five minutes away. It's really nice in Swift Current and everything's so close, so kind of just hang out with a couple of guys. That's about it. What, what type of game do you play? Uh, I think I'm an offensive player. Um, I play a really uh, smart game. I think that I have... Uh, High hockey IQ. Um, I think that I'm a player that has really good uh, scoring instincts in and around the net. Um, I think just a good player that makes uh, good overall small plays on the ice and just uh, plays a good speed. I think that's what I am. While the GM and his guys do their work for this year's draft, 335 miles to the east, a Bruins draft pick from 2010 is doing his. B. Senum and Ryan Spooner is home in Kanata, Ontario, preparing for what looks to be a crucial season for him. After struggling to stay with the big club in his first few seasons, Spooner finally found his game after a call-up in February. The team rewarded Spoons with a new two-year contract this summer, which means more material for the memorabilia wing of his proud parents' home. This was my draft jersey that my dad made for me for Christmas. Um, he made the frame himself and all that kind of stuff and that's been hanging in my closet for I don't know how many years but he decided to do that and then my jersey over here too which he framed up. And it's not just mom and dad who revel in Ryan's achievements. His grandfather has his own special tradition. Yeah so these are books. Um, my grandfather made these for me. Uh, he's made one for every single year I've played. Um, this one was my first year that I played in the O and then since then it's made pretty much one for every single season, so it goes through each game and then it highlights if I scored and all that kind of stuff, so it's kind of cool that he made those for me. Along with seeing his family and revisiting some past hockey successes, Spoons has another important reason to come home. This is Carl. He's my chocolate lab. I got him in Massachusetts my first year I played pro. I got him as a puppy until he was about seven or eight months old and I sent him home so I got called up and couldn't take care of him anymore, so he's been here since then. and. My parents will not give them back to me because they're in love with them. Um, and then my dad bought a Newfoundland, uh, so they've kind of bonded, so. Come on, Kens. Come on, Kens. Come on. No, it's fine. We're good. Being able to spend time with his dogs is one great benefit in the off season. And it also offers time to reflect on last year. You ready? Come here. Go get it. I think at the start of the year I was a little bit disappointed in myself that um, I didn't play the way that I wanted to and um, I kind of got down on myself and it kind of showed in how I played and just didn't really feel like, um, I guess you could say myself. Um, I didn't score which was kind of one reason why I didn't feel myself and I, I just didn't feel like I was helping out as much as I could have and um, once I scored and once I kind of felt that I was actually helping the team, I kind of felt like I kind of belonged there, so I think that helped me out. Um, the mental part of the game is a big part of it, and I think that's um, kind of when I got past, uh, I guess, the hump, you could say, where I started to feel like myself, so. Ken, ready? Go get it. I mean, if I go to camp and I don't play well, um, I don't see the reason why they would want to keep me, you know? I've, I've shown that I could play a game that can help them, but at the end of the day, you know, I need to, I guess, kind of prove that I can do that for a, a full season, and that's kind of the task ahead. I, I just want to go into camp and just kind of show that I'm ready to play um, the full season and show that I'm, I guess you could say, ma mature enough and um, just kind of go with it like that. So.
Welcome to South Florida, home to sun, sand, and the 2015 NHL entry draft. We've got a couple things in play, so I want to see how far those, uh, those D will drop. The countdown until Don Sweeney's critical first draft is on. But before the first pick is chosen, the new GM is already making decisions that will shape the team for years to come. Hamilton. That's a big Sweeney ultimately pulls the trigger on two of the biggest trades in recent Bruins history. Dougie Hamilton to Calgary for picks 15, 45, and 52 in the 2015 draft. And Milan Lucic to LA for the 13th pick, goalie Martin Jones and defense prospect Colin Miller. With the draft now just a few hours away, the Bruins franchise has been decisively altered. The team has gained salary cap flexibility and owns an unprecedented three consecutive first round picks. Thank you, Boston. Don't On the draft floor, the Bruins continue to receive inquiries about those three first rounders. You're going to jump to Brus? If Zabril's there. If Zabril's there, we're taking him. If Zabrowski's there, we're taking him. And then, and then third guy's there. You're not going to take, you take Sanderson over the D? Yeah, because Zabril's already there. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, we want these guys. You guys like the players. Yeah. Yes. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. After weighing their options, the bees stand pat, staying on the podium to pick an amazing three in a row. Jacob Saboral at 13, Jake DeBrusque at 14, and Zach Senishin at 15. No doubt Bruin fans are concerned over the departure of Luch and Dougie Hamilton, but with the team's salary cap crunch, change was inevitable. For now, the sheer youthful joy of the three newest Bruins offers hope for the future. It's unreal, hey? Yeah. Hey. Did you shake? Oh, I shake. Was oh, yeah, when I stood up, when I was walking, yeah. when I was walking, I was like, my legs went frozen. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was just staring at the ground, so I didn't, yeah. I didn't miss a step. Yeah. I was just like, wow. Next up, Jake DeBrusque and his newly drafted teammates must run the post-draft gauntlet of interviews, autographs, and photos. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, might as well. Let's see if we can get you in Studio C. Studio C. In no one's in here. No way. <laughs> Perfect. That's what I like. Yeah. And just bring another hand on the Perfect. Just like that. Great. Perfect. Awesome. Much. Thanks. Oh, wow. You see that? Pull that up to the camera. Okay, I'll go quick. I'll go quick. And I have no Twitter on there either. My Twitter notifications are turned off. That's good. I'm sure Not bad, hey? Eh? All right. Uh, who are you most looking forward to playing with on the Bruins? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> how happen often. Yeah, how do I? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would say probably uh, Patrice Bergeron. Boston's just a crazy town. I can't wait to get started. It's good. Like I said, unbelievable, I think, 17 times in that interview, but I, like, I was going to run out of room, so I put it on real. But yeah, I know. Insane, I was, gonna th I was thinking, it, it is insane. It's like, how about with the gel? But my mom got a little into it and wanted to do it all, so I don't really know what. Uh, yeah, but she just, she did it, so. They're ready for it. On to the next okay, one. Yeah, you smile, big smile. Oh, okay, we'll do. <laughs> there you go. Oh, okay. Oh. I like the gold. Perfect. You guys hungry? Yeah, a little bit. Hey? 
They're thrilled to be a part of the organization. Thank you. Glad to have you. And so a day that has brought profound change to the club winds down. At the post-draft get-together, there are smiles and genuine optimism, but also an awareness that the truly hard work is just beginning. Summer has come to Boston, and as the calendar turns to July, vacation is on the minds of many, but not on Causeway Street. July 1st marks the start of NHL free agency, and the Bruins have been busy, signing left winger Matt Bolesky, who is coming off a career year with Anaheim, to a five-year deal on day one. You guys want to see the locker and stuff today? Yeah, please. How's it going? Right. Nice to meet you. You, you too. Jeremy, Jeremy. Jeremy, nice to nice meet you. Welcome. Yeah, I'm excited. Let me know how the apartment stuff goes tomorrow. <laughs> well, they're in good hands. Enjoy it. All right. All right. Welcome. All right. I'll see you probably at the game tomorrow night. All right. Good. All right. Thanks. Next stop, the Bruins Pro Shop, and a sneak peek at what Matt will look like in black and gold. Looks good, huh? If you're new to Boston, there's a short list of places you have to visit. Fenway Park is at the top of that list. And at the ballpark, Matt meets up with his newest teammate, another recent acquisition by the Bees, Boston's own Jimmy Hayes. Just, uh, welcome back and welcome to town. Thank you. Thanks for having How's us. it feel, especially for you? You grew up here, obviously. You know what uh, the passion's all about here and the fans are all about. What's it been like these last few days since uh, everyone found out you were coming to the yeah, Boston it's, Bruins? It's, uh, it's been very surreal. It's been a very exciting moment for myself and my family. So it's just to be able to come back hometown and play for the Bruins is a dream come true. Tonight, Jimmy and Matt are special guests of the Red Sox and get to be on the field as part of the pregame ceremonies. Yeah, we actually, when I was in college, we played an um, outdoor game here. Oh, right. And we, since we were the home team, it was like a home game for us. Yeah. It against BU, we got... We got the just dug out. Though it may not be their usual venue, the Boston fans make the guys feel right at home, of course. Good luck to you this year. Thank you. you can take a few asses out there. I'll try to. But the boys are still feeling a bit nervous. They're worried they might be asked to throw out the first pitch in front of Big Poppy, Pedroia, and 37,673 of their closest friends. I literally got loose. I could throw a strike. I had Tor put on like I actually have back catching gear at home. I'm like, put this on, stand there. I gotta work on throwing balls. But I thought I'd see if I could still reach. Yeah. Not to worry though. Tonight, no Bruins will be called upon to throw strikes. Instead, they'll join a lucky fan to start the game in traditional style. Pro hockey is a full-time job these days, so even though it may be mid-July, the Boston Bruins are still at it. It's time for the team's annual development camp, and this year, it's a full house. Well, it's a bigger group than we normally have, but uh, first and foremost, on behalf of the Boston Bruins, welcome to the Bruins organization, each and every one of you. You know, the fundamental thing we've talked about is really about you guys getting to know what we want to do as an organization. We get to know you, you get to know us, and you get to know each other. But again, you know, like, let's, let's look forward to this week, each and every one of you, because we, we are, as an organization, we are excited about the future of, of what you guys represent. The importance of these Bruins prospects to the organization is huge. And who better to address that than head coach Claude Julien? Words of encouragement, I can tell you there's been a lot of players that have come to this camp and believe it or not, within a year or the following camp for the year after, we're on the big team. 
and that's happened many times, you know, uh, just as far as uh, even uh, last year. Uh, Pasternak in his first camp made our team, so there's a lot to be gained from this. We are in a phase here where we're, you guys are the future and we're trying to move forward. You know, there's always a cycle in this, in this game. So you guys are part of that cycle that's going to have an opportunity to step in and play for this team if you do things right and if you focus and you push yourself as hard as you can and listen to the people around that are going to be trying to help you. Okay? Bruins have been bringing their top draft picks and prospects to a four-day development camp each July for nearly a decade. There are off-ice sessions, team building, and of course, practice. But the morning of day one is always special because it belongs to Bruins strength and conditioning coach, John Whitesides. Good, give me everybody in the lounge facing this way. First guy right here, out walking. Mom, move him. Donato, let's go. You've been around here long enough, you know. Give us your last name. Benning. Benning, six feet. Put your shoes on. And Pinen, 223.3. 89 and a half. Zaboral, 200.4. You got enough hair, kid. All the way up, all the way up, all the way up. All the way up, all the way up, all the way up. Doesn't happen very often. It's surprising when they do that. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. It's not all the way down. All the way down. Get up. Get up. Nice. Come on, let's go. Good pace to the bench. Good pace to the bench. Up. Come up. Up. Drive it. Good reps, good reps, good rep. Get up, chin over. Seventeen, eighteen, fifty-two, fifty-three, fifty-four. Timers ready. Eight, nine. 40, 41, 42, 17, 18, 39, backer touch of lines, let's go, 8, 9, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, okay, you guys go in the, weight, in, the, in the weight room, make sure everything's cleaned up, then get changed up and get on the ice, quick turnaround, that's right. Those brutal conditioning tests were just a warm-up. There's lots more action for the boys today, both on and off the ice. <laughs> you'll, you'll like it, I think. Go ahead, guys. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll for sure like it. On the ice, it's practice with B's Director of Player Development, Jay Pandolfo. Keep going, keep going! When you're, when you're like coming around this way like this, try, try to get the puck out, you know what I mean, like this? Instead of turning your hands over, so then you can pass or shoot if you get the, the puck out here, okay? While the Bruins brass watches over practice, a second group gets the off-ice session with a special guest. All right, guys. Um, my name's Tori. Uh, I see a couple familiar faces. And Tori Krug can offer some unique perspective here because he attended this very camp in 2012. Uh, the first thing, um, I played at Michigan State from 2009 to 2012. I left after my junior year to sign with the Bruins. Played two games, um, made my debut against Pittsburgh. You know, it's dream come true, right? Play in the National Hockey League. Uh, pretty excited about what I did, what I accomplished. Went home, obviously uh, celebrated with my friends, my family. Probably got a little bit too carried away. Uh, came into development camp and first guy I saw is John Whitesides. You know, I got pinched at 15%. Um, it was an eye-opening experience for sure. Uh, the biggest thing I learned from development camp was 
you know, the professionalism. Um, and, and that's, there's a lot of different categories with that. It's, you know, it's the way you treat people, your personality. Um, everybody's here for a reason, right? You guys are all good hockey players. You're obviously on the Bruins radar. Uh, you know, you're not that much better than him and he's not much better than the next guy, but, um, you know, they're here to see how you guys are as people and your personality and the way you carry yourself. You know, part of being a professional, when you walk in the door, you see the trainers, you, you know, you say, hello, good morning, how you doing? You, you see everybody. Um, you know, that's part of it, your personality and how you carry yourself. As Tori explains to the campers what it takes to be a Bruin off the ice, Jay Pandolfo continues showing them on the ice. That's it. Turn, turn, turn that body. Good job. But that's like nowadays it's so important to be able to protect pucks and puck possession. That's you guys hear like term all the time now. So just keep working on that stuff. You know, that's that's what we want to see here. We want guys that are strong on the puck, can possess it. When you don't have it, you want to get it back too. So keep working on things like that. Been working on your shot lately, huh? That was fine. They're tired. <laughs> it's such a long day. Uh, not being drafted. Uh, I get heated every time I talk about this. So, you know, as a kid, uh, you know, your dream is to get drafted, right? You know, the day I didn't get drafted, it was a terrible feeling. You know, I remember I was telling Whitey earlier, I was sitting at a, a sandwich shop in Michigan, um, you know, when the draft, you know, completed and I was getting calls from guys saying, oh, yeah, we were going to take you, but we decided to take so-and-so. And I don't know what happened. Like, you, you're on our list when I left and blah, blah, blah. And, and, uh, you know, it, I, I was pissed off. <laughs> I saw guys that were getting drafted that, you know, I knew I was way better than, I knew I was going to end up being better than for sure. And, uh, you know, it didn't happen. At the same time, this was the best thing that ever happened to me. I mean, it, at the time, I didn't know that, but uh, it lit a fire under my ass. I wanted to prove people wrong and say, you know what, you got, you got something wrong. <laughs> you guys passed over me, I'm going to make you regret it. Um, you know, you guys got drafted or you're here, you signed a deal or whatnot, that's just the beginning. You know, congratulations, get over it, you know, have your fun, whatever. Now it's time to go to work. If you're not going to put in the work, somebody else is going to do it. But nobody else is going to do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. The Bruins are providing all these resources for you and really take things in and absorb and ask questions. You know, be a sponge. Um, you always have to be willing to learn. You got to take something in every time you have the opportunity to. You know, once you get to Providence or sign a contract, they say, you know, it's, it's not necessarily too hard to get to the NHL, but the hardest thing is to stay in the NHL. So that's, you know, that's a, something that's stuck with me actually for a while, and I still think about that all the time. Good luck. Yeah. Everyone in Boston knows we love that dirty water. Now it's time to make sure the guys participating in the Bruins development camp know it too. The Bruins prospects are visiting Harvard's new old boathouse for a crash course in the sport of rowing. Oh man. As far as team building exercises go, this is a pretty good one. Everyone on board has to be strong, fit, and very literally pulled together. All right, let's go. <laughs> good, good. Woo, good work. Okay. Yeah. Stop. Yep. Watch each other. Eyes on the person in front of you. Ready? We're going to catch together for five. Ready? Here we go. Four. Boston Bruins preach competition at all levels. So regardless of the prospects' rowing skills, you just know they have to race. Yeah, go catch him! Go get him! Last 10 seconds! Last 10 seconds! Go! Get him, get him! Stop, everyone! Stop! Stop! Stop rowing! Stop rowing! Stop rowing!
The last phase of development camp is the exit interview, where Bruins management gives the prospects their evaluation. And with the Bruins roster in transition, it's hard to overstate their importance. Last year, David Pasternak sat in this exact seat. Well, give us your impressions of the week. Yeah, it was really uh, an exciting week, for sure. And it, it was awesome for me to kind of be able to see the organization and see how professional you guys are. Kind of an eye-opener for me a little bit. I thought uh, I, I kind of knew what I had to expect, but uh, for sure I did. And you have 31 vertical jump. Like, your frame and your, your base that you have right now is, is excellent. Now we just need to add to it at a slow incremental progression so that you get comfortable on the ice, you don't lose that speed, you don't slow down. All right, stay on it. Thank you very much. Welcome aboard, bud. All right. Good job. Congrats. Good camp. How was your week? It was fun. It was uh, pretty uh, tough, but it was fun. I had fun. Tough? Uh-oh. Well, it was just condensed, right? Yeah, it was good. It was, yeah. a, lot. It was a lot. Yeah. yeah. On the ice, I thought, I thought you had a good week. I still, you're going to keep, you know, you're going to have to keep working on strength gains and and a little bit of skating stuff, and maybe getting a little, little deeper knee bend. Some of those things I think are gonna help you out. But I mean, you can see it around the net, in your hands and stuff like that, getting the puck up, and all those things. It's you know, such stuff to teach you, and you have that. So you have to be that self-starter that says, "I'm gonna seek the harder path." And you, you know, because you have the ability that other guys don't, and that's what's that's what's gotten you to this point. But to get you to the next level and beyond, now we're gonna go to work on some of those things. But if you were by far the probably the most skilled guy around the net, but to get there and to go back and forth up and down the ice, you can see you, it, it's hard, isn't it? Yeah. I think if you improve those legs and your core, mm -hmm. I mean, you didn't come here just to just to fit in, did you? No. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's what I'm saying. And you'll know that. When you come in rookie, you'll know that next level. When you get to main camp, you'll know that next level. Well, I'm just trying to get you to understand and prepare for that. That's all it is. While the work of the future Bruins is wrapping up in Wilmington, the work of the current Bruins remains ongoing. Max Talbot has played 10 seasons in the NHL, so he knows what it takes to prepare himself. But this offseason has been different. The team's failure to make the playoffs and the talk it generated has added a whole new level of intensity. You know, I've only been a Bruin for, I played 18 games in, in the logo, but it is uh, so exciting to wear that, that B in the front of the sweater. And you need guys to, to want to wear that jersey. I heard some words which I hated this summer in reconstruction and, and uh, you know, uh, this just pissed me off because we have a very strong core, we have great players. You know, uh, every team has the ch same chance of going, uh, winning the Stanley Cup. So for us, it's uh, new players, but the core is the same, and I'm sure the goal will be the same. No matter how motivated they are, every player needs their downtime, that retreat away from hockey. For Max Talbot, it's a renovated farmhouse on the outskirts of Montreal. Jackson! Oh, man! <laughs> Good girl! We bought this house for the land, you know. We always get a lot of guests here, like family and stuff. They come hang out, and we wanted a place to run and a uh, uh, place to, to, to actually just be alone, be ourselves. And, and the potential is nice because we have big land and we can... Uh, and do we have all the woods in the back? We have a trail, so we can uh, we can run in it. We uh, we can ski. At the end of the day, while Max Talbot may be a pro hockey player, he really is just a regular guy, a regular guy who loves his house, his family, and yes, his garden. Uh, we have a big garden here. All uh, all summer, we 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 ate our vegetables. And it's something you're proud of, you know, uh, when you do salad and you get your own lettuce and and cucumber and tomatoes in it, uh, uh, very, uh, it's rewarding, you know, and uh, I think it's good values for, for the kids as well. There you go, green beans. I haven't looked at the carrots in a little bit, so. I'll try to get you a big one. Ah, small little carrots, so they're not, uh, they're not ready yet. 
Is that a cucumber or what? So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty cool. Ah, oh, my You really got to go slowly. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> that, so this is my summer training. This is my summer training. <laughs> come on. Hey. <laughs> this one's the fastest. So that's just at the end of the summer, you finish with the red ones. So you see, I'm not, I'm not ready, not fit to play. Sorry, Whitey. Uh, I'll keep working. Another move the Bruins made this offseason was the acquisition of renowned Flyers agitator Zach Rinaldo. No doubt cheering for Ronaldo instead of booing him will be an adjustment for Bruins fans, but a visit to his parents' house in suburban Toronto shows it might not yeah. be all that hard. Yeah, this, is, this has been my bedroom. Uh, it's my parents' house. I'm back here in the summertime, haven't found a house yet. Um, this was my dog and now it's my family's dog, Diesel. Basin was never finished. It just got finished like... Uh, my first year, the first year, the first thing I ever did was finish this basement. It was all concrete. It was actually all concrete. My dad spray painted it white, put the red line, put the blue line to make it look like a hockey rink. Um, and I used to roll blade and shoot pucks down here, so. <laughs> That's my first jersey, to be honest with you. See that? Uh, my old man, like, number Bobby Orr. So on the, you see that was my little nickname when I was young. And he liked Bobby Orr, so this was my first ever jersey. Pretty cool, though. First goal against New Jersey, so. A lot of flyer stuff, though. Disregard that flyer stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I got a working hat with my name on it. Italian. I don't know where this stuff comes from, but people give stuff to me all the time. I like, I like to keep it. If you want to come back over here, it's got my name and everything on it. It's pretty cool. And if you're wondering about Zach's reputation as an agitator, well, that's on display down here as well. Uh, Hamilton reps, I was eight years old, AAA. I got most aggressive player, I was eight years old. So, you can only imagine what I'm gonna do at 25 years old. So welcome to Boston, Zach. I think this might be fun. Back in Wilmington, Mass, Bruins training camp is still a few weeks away, but some familiar faces are back on the ice. How'd you guys get the memo? <laughs> Louie, you look good. Flying, bud. With training camp nearing, Zdeno Chara and Patrice Bergeron have called an informal captain's practice. And I don't know about you, but after a very long summer, Seeing the Boston Bruins on the ice feels pretty good. Hey, take a face off, Pasta. You are the strongest. Face, uh, face off! I'm, 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 taking, I'm taking the most dangerous man right here. He's going to come around the blue line, along the blue line. You hit him for a long pass, and then you go. You get a pass. Yeah. Captain's practice always ends with a scrimmage. And while the Stanley Cup is not up for grabs today, something else important is on the line. Three goals, up to three. Lunch. Lunch on the line. Pasta win a face off. Two one. Oh! Let's get him. Let's go, White. Switch the goalie, switch the goalie. <laughs> yeah, that's it. ZR, 
Sie are in the house. Oh, oh, two, two. Two, two. You gotta go. No, no, no. Don't go. Identity. The characteristics determining who or what a person or thing is and what they represent. The Bruins have been Boston's team since 1924, and 91 years later, the club still strives to embody the city's identity. Tough, hardworking, resilient, proud of its past, hopeful for its future. Despite significant changes to their front office, NHL roster, and prospect pool, this year's team will be no different in their desire to capture the town's identity. Any Bruins fan will tell you that this offseason was long, way too long. But guess what? It's over. The ice has returned. And so have the Bruins. Welcome back. Thank you.